Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our service. Uh, this morning, uh, we would like to give the rest to uh, Samantha this morning. So we will go into do more of contemporary worship today. We'll be singing some contemporary hymns that is found in in our uh, faith we sing hymn and uh, uh, we'll do some medley songs. So this morning we'll be singing I Love You Lord, He is Exalted and Jesus uh, name above, above all names. There is a story, there was a story of a young man uh, one Sunday morning he uh, wakes up and he was complaining to his mom uh, because by the time he was awakened his mom was already dressed up. It's a Sunday morning. And he said to his to to um, um, her mom, "I'm not going to go to church this morning. It's just that I just I just don't like to go to church." And you know what? Um, his mom said, looked at him at his on on in his eyes, and he said, "Oh, my son." Whether you like it or not, you need to go to church. The son said, no, I'll just stay home. I'm not going to go to church. Of course, the mother said, no, you have to go to church, <laughs> whether you like it or not. And the mother said, son, whether you like it or not. She repeated it many times said, whether you like it or not, you need to go to church. And the son said, why? Because you are the pastor of the church. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I didn't do that to my wife. <laughs> Beginning today and uh, next Sunday, we will be doing a celebration of All Saints Sunday. We would like we would like us to, to uh, remember the saints of the church. And part of what we'll be hearing today is about the fate of a widow who seek justice from a wicked judge and he and she did it through prayer brothers and sisters in Christ as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth hear these words pray without ceasing pray without giving up pray with tenacity courage and hope called by God to be people of prayer we gather today as people of prayer, come, let us worship and pray together. If you are able, let us stand and let us sing these songs. I love you, Lord. He is exalted. And uh, 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 Jesus' name above all names.
let us pray. Mighty God, we come into your powerful presence with hope in our hearts. May we pray with some focus and strength with which we receive our prayers. Flow through our prayers and our worship to this end, that we may be served from our God of trust, even as we may serve in the Amen. Let us be seated for silent meditation.
Yeah, it was kind of fun. Yeah. Well, you know what? Today we're going to talk about something that I bet some of you have, have done before. Have you ever really wanted something and asked your parents for it? Yes. Really wanted something? Yes. Yeah? And sometimes they say, oh, sure, we'll give you anything you want. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I don't think that's the truth. Well, here's a story about a little boy who wanted everything in the world to play an instrument and be in the band. He really, really wanted this. He wanted it so bad. So one night at supper, he asked his mom and dad, Mom, Dad, can we please buy an instrument so I can someday be in the band? And his parents thought, well, we're not going to say yes, and we're not going to say no. What does that mean? Maybe. Maybe, right? Do you like that answer, maybe? No, nobody likes the answer, maybe. <laughs> maybe, because you know, an instrument's really expensive. And we're just not sure you're going to stick with it. So, do you think the little boy gave up asking? No. <laughs> no, he did not give up asking. And so, the next night at supper, he asked again, Mom and Dad, have you decided? Can I have an instrument? Can I? We just haven't made up our mind yet. So the next day, the little boy decided, maybe he'll do a little information seeking. Own. So on his way home from school, he went to a music store, and he found a beautiful, shiny trumpet that only cost $100. Now, $100 is a lot of money, but he was really, really excited about it. So again, the next night, that night at supper, he said, Mom and Dad, please, can I have an instrument? I went to a music store, I saw one I really liked. And the parents said, well, we're never going to hear the end of this. We might as well go take a look. So they went to the music store, and they knew that he was really serious about this because he was asking and asking and asking. And they decided to buy him an instrument. They bought him that trumpet. And he joined the band, and he played in the band, and he played in the band in high school, he played in the band in college. He majored in music and went on to teach music. Is that cool? So he kind of got the right thing because did he give up asking for what he wanted? No. But he kind of understood that maybe right now wasn't, wasn't right for him. Now, do you ever ask God for something? I ask God for stuff all the time. Does he say yes every single time I ask him for something? No, he doesn't, does he? Not right away because you know what? Maybe God thinks that that's not the right thing for me. But that doesn't stop me from asking. So I pray again, and I pray again. And I don't give up praying. That's called being persistent. Or stubborn. Any of you guys stubborn? Are you stubborn? Oh, <laughs> you're pointing Owen. fingers. <laughs> Owen? Owen? <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't mean to get names going out. I'm stubborn, too. I'm very stubborn. But that, that can be a good thing when you're praying to God. But you know what? God knows us. He knows us very well. And he gives us what we need if it's God's will. But I want you to remember, when you're praying to God, don't just pray once. Pray daily. Pray every day. Pray every day for people to get well. Pray every day for people to be happy. Pray every day. Don't give up. Because you never know when God's going to answer your prayers. It's very important. So let's have a little prayer today. All right? Let's have a little prayer. Dear Father, teach us to pray and to be patient and persistent or stubborn in our prayers. If we desire good things, remind us that we need to pray and pray again. And that God will answer us if it's his will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you really need candy today? Are you sure? Are you absolutely sure? Yes. Okay, I guess you can ask. Yay!
For our lesson this morning, our text this morning, I would like to read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. 1 to 8. When we listen to the reading of this text, I would like us, as we listen, uh, uh, remember the saints of the church. Then Jesus told a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone. Yet because his widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, in other translation, when the Son of Man returns, he will find, will he find faith on earth? Will he find faith on earth? The good Lord add his blessings as we listen to his words. Amen. As a church, as the body of Christ in this world, Part of what we do in our worship celebration is to designate a Sunday for the celebration of the saints of the church. Actually, that will be Sunday, November 7. We call it All Saints Sunday. We remember the memories of the saints. We celebrate the witness of their faith. And next Sunday, we will name them in our hearts. So today and next Sunday, I would like us to consider why we need to look back and consider the examples of their faith. That's why today I have chosen Luke chapter 18 verses 1 to 8 as the text for our worship celebration. Let us consider this text for this opportunity and gift to worship our Lord in spirit and in truth. Church, there are two main characters in the parable. First, there was a wicked judge. There was a wicked judge. He feared not God and did not respect others. His was not an elected position. So he was not accountable to anyone. He was without credentials for so important a job. He was a powerful man, but a pathetic person. Second, there was a widow. As most widows would have been in her day, she was powerless. She was in utter helpless condition. But Jesus here and on other occasions Brothers and sisters in Christ honored widows and judged severely those who took advantage of them, who sold widows' houses. Jesus honored a particular widow he saw in the temple, giving her two pens out of the abundance of her faith. Here our heroine is a helpless widow, but you would never know it. 
She was not to be taken for granted, brothers and sisters in Christ. She had done wrong and brought her case before the judge to vindicate her. Or she may well have felt the intimidation of the court. But she did not let it stop her. She was a remarkable woman. The judge put her off. He had no time for so trifling a person. She was set on her way. He had no time uh, 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 for, 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 for the, 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 the cry and the plea of this remarkable woman. That's why she, she was sent on her way. But she came back. She was sent away again, but she came back, and again, and again, and again. In the end, the judge declared, in effect, I have, I have had it already, because you have been so tenacious, because you have become a bother to me, I'll grant your request. What does this mean? Notice that Jesus said this is a wicked judge. He expressed grace for her only because of her persistence. He is not like our Father in heaven who is love and grace and compassion and knows how to give good gifts to his children. The parable ends with a question. Will the Son of Man when he comes Find faith on earth. It is an open-ended question. Maybe yes, maybe no. It all depends on whether or not believers tenaciously follow. The question is, will the Son of Man, when He comes, find faith on earth? Have you encountered this question? in your life. You know, whenever we remember the lives of the saints, it's not working. <laughs> Will the Son of Man, when He comes, when He comes, find faith on earth? You know, brothers and sisters in Christ, whenever we remember the lives of the saints of God, it invites us to consider the, this heart-penetrating question. Will Jesus find faith in us as He found faith in the lives of the saints? Will Jesus find faith in us? No wonder the church included the celebration of All Saints Sunday in our Christian liturgy to point and amplify the import of this question. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on earth? I see only one thing when it comes to the faith of this great woman of faith, this widow. Great and simple faith manifest in her persistency characterized as always praying. You know what persistence means in Greek? It means always praying. Did you know that? Always praying. In our text, praying to God is for the purpose of effecting social justice. God answers the cry by giving justice into the hearts of the one who cries. In this way, the one who prays will endure because she or he will be grounded in God and God alone.
Think of these brothers and sisters in Christ. The grounding in God happens if the one who prays manages to pray always. You know, that is the kind of faith that Jesus would like to find in us when He comes. That's why the question when He comes, will He find faith on earth? Will He find a widow? A one that is always praying. Always praying. It means the channel between God and human person remains open. Divine energy will not periodically spurt and then dry up. Rather, it will be a steady, empowering flow. Therefore, the ultimate source of the energy that wears down injustice will be coming from the boundless source of the passion for justice. Praying always, church. Is only possible if the one praying is like the widow. <laughs> the widow in herself is a powerless figure. When the powerless who seek justice take down the powerful who refuse to give it, a careful investigation will undercover the hidden agenda of God. The energy of wearing down is mediated through the widow, but it does not originate with her. It is the result of her communion with God, made possible by her continual praying. As Wesley indicated, utter helplessness and powerlessness is the key to entering the kingdom of God, the key to saving grace. That is why we need to remember always when we pray, we must pray in faith. That is a great faith. That is a simple faith. That is not a surprise. Remember, faith is simply believing that God has done everything He said He would do. And believing it so much, everything we say and do is based on that believed. When you pray, you must believe that God has already done everything He said He would do. And believing it so much that everything we say and do is based on that belief. We should never be surprised about what God can do because God is faithful. As people we live in between promise and fulfillment, we are recipient of God's promise and we are the beneficiary of the fulfillment of God's promise. That is the grace given to us by God. If this is the case, then we need to ask, will Jesus find faith in you when he comes? Well, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, that Jesus himself is coming again. It says, for the Lord himself will, with a cry of command, with the archangels call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. At that point, the dead who are Christians, will come out of the graves from all over the earth and be caught up into the air with Jesus. Every dead Christian, even if they were cremated and their ashes were scattered around the world, will miraculously rise up from the earth into the sky. Then all the Christians who are alive will be caught up into the heavens with Jesus, according to Scripture. From that point, we will be with the Lord forever. Oh, let me ask you something. Do you believe this is true? Amen. Yes, absolutely. Do you believe this is true? Are you excited?
expecting Jesus to come again? Are you making yourself ready for his return so that when he comes, when he returns, he will find faith? I hope you do not mind me giving this critical observation. It is rare that I meet Christians who actually act like they believe Jesus is returning today, tomorrow, or even for that matter. But Jesus will return and when he does, it will be too late to change our actions. All preparations must be made before he appears in the sky. Oh, Jesus made an interesting statement in our text that is often overlooked and untaught. Our text, while speaking a parable, Jesus said, I will tell you he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Oh, what will Jesus be looking for when he returns? That is the big question. He will be looking for faith in people who believed in him. When Jesus returns, he will be coming to gather up church. He will be coming to gather up Blood Brook United Methodist Church and other Christian churches all throughout the world. He expects the church to be spotless and without blemish. Ephesians 5 to 7 declares so as to present the church to himself in his splendor without a spot or wrinkle or anything of the kind. Yes, so that she may be holy and without blemish. Remember church, the church is not a building. The church is not an organization or denomination. If you are a believer in Jesus, and Jesus will find faith in your heart, then you are the church. Practice telling to yourself, the church will go to 715 Lincoln Street to worship. Not that you go to church, it is the church that comes to worship Him. That's why for the church to have faith, when Jesus comes again, we must believe what God says about us and live each day in that belief. Not only do we need to believe, but must put that belief into action each day. This is called walking by faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. This is the faith of the saints. When we walk by faith, we are empowered and enabled by God to overcome the things of the world. Now, don't take me wrong. We won't eliminate our problems. We won't eliminate the impact and, 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 and effect of this pandemic. But we will be able to go through them without fear, knowing that God always does what He says. Don't ever be surprised. The Bible promises us that God will go to bless us. When you receive that blessing, it is not a surprise. It is a given because God is faithful. And when He says He will do, He has already done it for all of us. Oh, God had provided by faith in His Word. Good things for those who believe in Him. He has promised health prosperity, peace, and deliverance. All these things are promised in His Word for those who seek Him in faith. I ask you once again, brothers and sisters in Christ, when Jesus comes, will He find faith in you? Will Jesus, when Jesus comes, will He find faith? In you. Let us join together in this affirmation. We, as the Gladbrook United Methodist Church, are called by God to make disciples who know Christ, grow in Christ, serve like Christ. 
and share Christ with others. As the people of God who are called to be justice for the oppressed, food for the hungry, freedom for the imprisoned, and sight for the blind, let us lift up those in need as we share gifts for the church mission. Together let us pray. God of justice and love, transform our offerings that we may be gifts of justice and love for a world in need of hope and help. Let love flow through our offerings that we may become gifts of the world. In Jesus' name.
mi hijo. The world invites us to find purpose and meaning in this life. Yet your word tells us, Father, that only in Jesus that we can find purpose and meaning. That's why we trust in Jesus. That's why we surrender to Jesus. That's why we agree on His Lordship. So that we can have that fullness and purpose and meaning of life that will only come from Him. We confess that we have taken lightly your commandments and statutes. We have not loved you with all our hearts and soul and mind, nor our neighbors as ourselves. We have not lived up to your expectations of us, nor taught our children to do so. We go through our busy routines without reference to your law. We seek recognition for our projects and accomplishments while forgetting to thank you for our abilities, our capabilities. All the gifts that come with the promise of life. We take our liber liberty for granted while running away from your truth. Forgive our foolish ways, O oh God, and save us from our misplaced priorities. Turn us away from selfish gain and empty rituals. Teach us your ways and help us to grow in understanding of your promises. Grant us courage to face our detractors and to challenge those who are rule, who, who rule unjustly. Give us that spirit to pray always so that when you come, you will find faith in us. Equip us to realize our own value as you, your beloved children, so we can view all people as neighbors to love. Thank you, God, for your sustaining care, your empowering, empowering love, your saving grace. Most of all, we rejoice in Jesus, who draws us near to you and to the joys of your realm. And as we prepare, we are preparing for the celebration of All Saints Sunday this coming November 27. Father God, may the light that you empowered to shine in the lives of the saints of your church continue to illumine in each of us so that when you return, what you have found in them will also be found in us. Lord, give us that faith persistent to seek your will and your guidance in every day. We also come in this prayer in faith to lift up the needs of our brothers and sisters we live up unto you, the father of Sister Jennifer, the mom of Sister Sam, whatever they need, Father God. We know, dear God, that you are willing to perform those extraordinary events and occurrences in our lives so that we can see your glory, Father God. Be compassionate. We live up unto you, Ruby, Raymer, Kim, Pepe, Jomali, Kyle Costa. We are glad to see him recovering from his heart surgery. We continue to pray for Brother Harold, for Brother Dwight, for Brother Chuck and Sister Marilyn, for Carolyn and Don, for Paul and for Corner. For Marilyn, for Carrie, for Bud, for Priscilla, for Janelle, for Sister Esther, for Larson, the grandson of Doyle and Joan, for Brother Craig, for Melva, then, for George and Galeen, for Emily, for Cindy and Bob Rogers. We pray for those.
touched by COVID-19. Looking up Facebook and TikTok and Instagram, we see faces of our friends and neighbors affected by this COVID-19. We have friends in the hospitals right now, Father God. We have friends lingering in their homes and on their, their, their sick bed. Their, their, on, on, in, in their rooms, confined in, within the, 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 the walls of their homes. We pray, Father God, that you touch them. We pray for our military families, our law enforcement and safety professionals. We pray for people under persecution everywhere, especially in those places where it is dangerous to profess the name of Jesus. And yet, Father God, if we are always praying, if we are always connected with you, it will be you that will deliver and put justice in our hearts. We pray for our many unspoken concerns. We are also praying, Father God, for the church conference that will be taking place in this space today at 2 p.m. We ask that you will go in to bless our DS, DS Moody, Colorado, and delegations from Galvin and Gladbrook Chapel United Methodist Churches. We pray, Father God, that as we come together in this church conference, may we once again receive the visions that you will go to put in our hearts, reminding us, dear God, of the significance of this question. When Jesus returns, will he find faith in each one of us? When Jesus comes, will he find faith in all the leaders that will come this afternoon. As we go forth from here, we take joy of, pro of proclaiming to the world that only in Jesus can we receive such a gift of faith that will open the doors of your saving grace to each one of us. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I would like to invite you now to, if you are able, to stand and let us sing this hymn, Make Me a Servant.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, we pray to God. God, go before us as we go forth in the days of this week to proclaim your wondrous deeds. Give to us open minds and ready spirits to speak your name often and lovingly. May your holy name be praised in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen.